So welcome to my video on ellipses. Before I start an example, I just want to go over some basic things that you should know before you start doing any homework problems. And I wrote for you two different uh, ellipse equations, one on the left and one on the right. And notice in both equations how we have a plus sign in the middle of the equations. So if you see an equation that looks like this and you don't see a plus sign, then it's not an ellipse. If there's a negative sign in the middle, um, then it's going to be in hyperbola. Um, so make sure you uh, you look for that whenever you are doing a homework example. And another thing I want to go over is notice how the a squared term is on the left side of both of the equations. That's not necessarily going to happen all the time. The a squared term is actually just the biggest number. So you have an a squared term and a b squared term. Uh, they're both in denominator. So whatever the bigger number is is your a squared, and whatever the smaller number is is your b squared. So those are just some basic things that I want to talk about before we start our example. So having said that, I will get started right away. Here we have the problem y minus 1 squared over 9 plus x minus 2 squared over 16 is equal to 1. And notice how we have a plus sign in the middle of this equation, so we know that it's an ellipse. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the center of the ellipse. All right, we are going to find the center. And the center is usually written in the form h k. And h is the x coordinate of the center and the k is the y coordinate of the center. So the h term is always the number next to x. So no notice how we have a 2 next to this number x and it's always the opposite sign. So since it is a negative 2 next to the x, our h term is going to be a positive 2. And our k term is actually the number that's next to the y term. Since we have a 1 next to y and it's a negative, it's going to be a positive 1. So it's the number is always the same and the sign is always the opposite. Um, so we have our center of our ellipse. Our center is the coordinate 2, 1. So I'm going to plot that on our graph over here. So I'm going to go over uh, to the right two units. 1, 2, and I'm going to go up one unit. So here we have the center of our ellipse, which is the point 2, 1. Alright, so now that we have plotted our center, now we need to find what our vertices are. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to find our vertices. Alright, and I was talking about the numbers a squared and b squared earlier. Those are our numbers in our denominator. And those, those numbers are very helpful in telling us where our vertices are. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to find our a squared term. And like I said before, the a squared is always the bigger number in the denominator. So we have a number 9 in our denominator on the left, and we have a number 16 on the number in our denominator on the right. So 16 is the bigger number, so our 16 is going to be our a squared. All right. and in order to find our a, we can just take the square root of a squared. So a is equal to the square root of 16, which is just 4. So the reason why this number is so helpful in finding our vertices is because a is the distance between the center of our ellipse and the vertice. So the distance of 4 is the distance between the center and the vertice. So let's go to our center, but we don't know which direction it goes. Uh, is, is the vertice four units to the right? Is the vertice four units up and down? So we don't know that. So I'm going to explain how we know which direction the vertice is. So what I like to do to find out which direction I need to go is I look where our a squared term is. Our a squared term is under the x value. Notice how we have an x in the numerator. And our a squared term is under the x value. So since our a squared term is under the x value, I know that the vertice is going to be four units in the x direction. So the x direction is parallel with the x axis, so that means it goes right and left. All right. So I know that our vertices are going to be four units in the x direction. So we have one, two, three, four. There's one vertice. Make a big dot. 
And we also have another vertice that is four units to the left. We have one, two, three, four. We have another vertice over here. And I'm just going to erase these dots that I wrote in the middle. So now that we've plotted the points, we actually we actually can find out what the actual coordinates of the vertices are. So the, the vertice on the left goes over to the right one, two, three, four, five, six units, and it goes up one unit. So we know that this is the point six one and the vertice to the left uh, goes over to the left one two units and then it goes up one unit uh, so we know that this is the point negative two positive one alright so now let's plot our other two vertices we can use our b squared term to help us with that our b squared term is going to be our smaller number in the denominator which is our number nine so we know since our b squared is equal to 9, then b can be found by taking the square root of that. So our b is equal to the square root of 9, which is equal to 3. And once again, since our b squared term is under our y value, notice how our b squared, which is 9, is under our y value, then we know that our b is going to go in the y direction. So our b is 3 units from the center in the y direction. So let's go to our center. The y direction is up and down. So I'm going to go up three units. One, two, three. I'm going to go down three units. One, two, three. And now we have plotted our vertices in the y direction. And once we plot them, then we can find out what the actual coordinates are. Um, for the vertice on the bottom, we go over one, two units and we go down one two units so that is the point positive two negative two and for our vertice on the top we go over one two units and we go up one two three four so that is the point positive two positive four all right so now that we've plotted our vertices now we can make a rough sketch of our ellipse which usually looks like a oval shaped I'm a really bad artist though so I apologize I'll try and do my best. All right, so now we have graphed our ellipse, and the last thing that we need to do is we need to plot our foci. All right, so the thing that we use to find the distance from the center to our foci is our c squared. And we have a formula to find our c squared value. Our c squared is going to be equal to a squared minus our b squared. And if you have trouble memorizing this formula, the way I like to think about it is c squared is equal to our bigger number squared minus our smaller number squared. Okay? So once again, our a squared is our big number. It's our 16. a squared minus b squared. Once again, our b squared is a smaller number than the denominator, which is 9. So our c squared value is equal to 16 minus 9, which is equal to 7. So if our c squared is equal to 7, we can find our value of c by taking the square root of that. So c is equal to the square root of 7. The square root of 7 is somewhere between the square root of 4, which is 2, and the square root of 9, which is 3. So it's in between 2 and 3, a little bit closer to 3. So the value, I would say, is just a little bit less than 3. All right, so I'm going to plot these points on the on our graph so once again our c is the distance from the center of our ellipse to the foci all right so which direction do we need to go it's always in the same direction of our a or it's in the same direction of the longer axis of our ellipse once you can tell that this is the longer of the axes of our ellipse we have one going in the x direction, which is much longer than the one going in the y direction. So we know that the c value is going to go in the x direction since it's the longer, or it's, since it's longer than the uh, than the y direction. So once again, square root of seven is a little bit less than three. So I'm going to go to the right of the center, a little bit less than three units. One, two, three, and I'll go a little bit left, so it's a little because it's a little bit less than three. And then I'm also going to go to the left. A little bit less than three units. One, two, three. A little bit less. And now we have plotted our foci.
All right, so the exact value of these points, since if you need to write down an exact coordinate, um, we know that the center is at the distance, or is at the x coordinate 2, and we know that this foci is the square root of 7 units to the right of that, so I'm going to add square root of 7 to that 2 for the x coordinate, and then our y coordinate just is, you can, is just 1, because it goes up 1 unit. And for this foci on the left, we know that the center of the ellipse is at 2, and that foci is square root of 7 units to the left of the center, so we can subtract the square root of 7 from that. And then our y coordinate is just up 1 unit, so our y coordinate is just 1. So I hope this video gave you a better idea of an ellipse, of how to graph it, and to find all the important points on it. I will be making videos on hyperbolas and parabolas as well, so if I haven't already made them, stay tuned. And until my next video, I will see you later.